Hello viewers, it's Peter Elgar, photographer again from Brentwood, Essex, England. Look, there's another shiny leather case with something interesting inside that I was given. Given this by a lady and um, her dad died 20 years ago. And she contacted our camera club and says there's some photographic gear. She wants to go to a good home and film gear. So, <laughs> I'm the only one that likes film gear, so I got this camera. And it's a 1935 to 1936 Kodak Retina. Now, I've never had a Kodak Retina before. This is the original case, so the, clip, the clip's a bit broken. The camera slides in like this. It says on the case, very faintly, I've read it somewhere at the back here, I think it's at the back here, Oh, over there, Gam, Gambini, it looks like, Bologna, in Italy. Now the dad was a sailor, and I think he got it on his travels. But this is a Kodak Retina, and it was very badly worn. So, um, I took some pictures of it before, and this is, the, this is what our after treatment. Now, there's one of it, and it's all shiny metal, because all the black paint, had been scraped off. So I've got myself some Humbrol enamel paint, which is this one. I was told to get Humbrol enamel matte black number 33 by a member of the Amateur Photographer Magazine Forum. Now matte number 30, well I found it, two pound it was, and I put some on with a little paintbrush, but it doesn't match the Kodak paint. <laughs> it, it's, it's too matte and the Kodak paint's slightly more glossy. But anyway, this is what I've done with it. So we open it up, press the little button under here, pull it out, fold in. It's got bellows. So on the bellows I've painted it with some Neats Foot Oil. And the bellows are nice and light tight. And the shutter works. We've got the shutter Working, so we'll put it on to say um, half a second. See, and one second it works, but it's slightly slow, but that's good. Yeah, slightly slow. When you put it on one second, your reciprocity failure of the film comes in, so it has to have longer anyway. So that one second is slightly longer. It goes to a three hundredth of a second on the computer shutter. Then there's a ring here where you turn that and it focuses against the little index. So here we are, there's an index at the top here. You focus that and it, it, you have to guess the distance because there's no coupled range finder. I'll show you some results in a minute. I've got most of them accurately focused by guesswork. That goes that has to go down, go down to one meter against the little line there. That's infinity there. And then your aperture, you've got 3.5 to f16. That's on 3.5, and we move that down there to f16. And um, there is another little aperture scale here as well. There's two aperture scales 3.5 to there as well. So maybe if you hold it that way you can see an aperture scale and if you're doing portrait one you can see the aperture scale that way so it's repeated twice. Then here is a cable release socket and I've actually used that. I put a cable release in there. Now it's 1935 to 36 so there's no flash synchronization with it and I found out by going on Mr. Chris Sherlock's site, the world-renowned expert in Kodak Retinas. This is a Type 118. But another unusual thing about it I found, compared with pictures I've seen, there's a Czechoslovakian one kroner coin here, and it's screwed into the blooming bottom here. And I thought, so why is that? There it is, a close-up of it. Czechoslovakia coin dated 1946. Here's the date 1946. That was 
dated, so the coin must have been put on around that time, although the camera is 1935 to 36, put on the base. So what was there? Well, what was there was the depth of field scale, which is here. And we turn it round, I think this way round, and the wording is actually in French. The depth of field scale. What the words? You need a good. You need a good eyesight to see it. But I never use the depth of field scale after many years. But that also doubles now as the film rewind knob. Now I've painted the top here. Look, that's nice and matte black. And I've done some touching up. I've forgotten a little bit there. But that was all, scri all scraped off. There's no black paint there. That's how it was originally. And I used the humdraw paint and across there as well. And I've managed to paint that across there. Look, there's some tiny little bits I've forgotten because I had it folded up, but I can go over that again. And inside, you know, open it up like this. Inside, there was loads and loads of bad areas inside which was shiny with worn paint here and on the pressure plate there was a bit of paint missing on the pressure plate that's been done now with my humbrol paint so that's better now loading the camera is a bit difficult and I had to read up on the instruction book because I forgot to, there's a little lever here called a film release lever and I forgot to press that across and tore the film so here's the, here's the rewind knob and that's where you put your film so I've taken pictures with some Oro NP20 film kindly sent to me by a gentleman from Denmark there's the film, I've cut it, I opened the camera in the dark I cut it and took some pictures on that out of date film dated 1992 and developed it in Rodinel 1 to 50 for 14 and a half minutes 15 would have been better but anyway I've got some nice negatives we're going to use an old film here so we pull up the knob put the cassette in there put in the knob there, make sure it's seated then we pull out a little bit of film and we've got a fit it into one of these slots like that Here we are. This is, I have to keep reading the instructions and then it says wind then it says make certain this is round to A I mean, there it is, there's a letter A there <laughs> you've got to have good eyes to see these things the Germans when they met the lamp must have had good eyes but as you get older, it's difficult to see. So you've got an A, and turn it around, you've got an R for rewind. So A must mean advance. Then it says, tighten the film, like that. Make certain, there's only one set of cogs. Make certain it's crossed there. Then close the back, latch it. Then wind it until it stops. Then you press this rewind lever across. Yeah, I stop. Then press the rewind lever across like that. Then wind it, and then we'll tighten that up. Then the there yeah, it's, it's turning, so it, it stops. So now you take a photo like that. Then you press the release lever again. Then you wind it and check that that moves. Take another photo. And now you're off. Then you press the rewind lever and you wind it. Take another photo. So when your film's all finished, it will stop winding. Then you turn this little lever to the letter R. It goes either way. There's a letter R around here somewhere. Um, where is it? Now there we are, there's the letter R. That has now disengaged the clutch and you can rewind the film back into the cassette by turning this and that, look, that moves, see, moving I'll show you how it all works by opening 
as it's an old film, you can see how it rewinds the film back into your cassette after you've taken all your snaps. There we are. Pull it out. It's ready for processing. Now the lens is a, is a 50 millimeter 3.5 Schneider Zenar. It's been 1935-36. It's not coated, but it's very sharp. I've done some quite good results with it. So now we'll have a look at some results. These are printed in the computer from scanned negatives, so they're not darkroom prints, but they're okay to show you. There's the first one where I guessed 1.3 meters, but the fox and that is out of focus and the grass behind here is in focus because that was taken hundredth of a second at 6.3 which they say is the best aperture to give the best definition and they're all handheld but the focus was out then I took a, an old shell we've got with some plant behind it this was at 3.5 I thought well I'll set one meter and I guessed one meter because it's been German it's not in feet it's in meters and it's sharp and behind it goes out of focus because that's on one meter at full aperture 3.5 so that was a good guess good guess then I went outside I braved the rain because we're getting terrible weather in England so I didn't do many outside as I crossed the road as a car and some apartments across the road from our house. I set six meters and I used a um, hundredth of a second and I think that was about 9.5 with the light, took a light read with a western. And this is sharp. There's a post here, there, which is difficult to see on this small print. But under a six times magnifier, you can read when you're not supposed to park there, the times when you're not supposed to park in that spot, it's residence parking. Anyway, you can read that there on the 935 lens, quite good. So we went indoors, took some pictures of my boy's bedroom. He's 20 years old, but he's still got his animals. And this was 3.5 with spotlighting in the bedroom. It's on a tripod. And this was using the um, one second shutter speed which is actually one and a half seconds so it makes up for reciprocity failure again minimum focusing distance one meter and this is all sharp here lovely sharpness I did do another one stop down f16 but on that size print you won't see the difference so this is a 3.5 one now here's it's half of a negative, only half a neg scan at 3.5. I managed to get that really pin sharp, the mouth and the jaws of the tiger. Pin sharp, that's 3.5. Camera on a tripod using daylight. And I switched on the room lights to put a, bit, a little bit of light this side. And then um, that is accurately focused and it's really, really sharp. It's a wonderful old lens, that Zenar lens. So I've um, done these initial experiments with this Retina, and I'm quite pleased with it, especially as it was free. Well, there we are, that's renovating one of my old cameras. So I'll say cheerio for now, and hope you've enjoyed this little rundown on the famous Kodak Retina series. 118 model. See you again and please subscribe to me then you'll know when I do my next video. Thanks for watching.